Uh, we've got uh, Dennis on line four. Dennis, welcome to the show. Are you there? Hello? Yeah, hi. Dennis, welcome to the show. You have a question for Ron. Hey, Ron. Uh, my question uh, runs in with the communion service. In Corinthians, uh, the church practice was, was misusing the, the, the communion service. And the disciples brought us out that people should eat from their homes before coming to take the Lord's Supper. And then in today's worship service, we follow that. We are being asked to, for, to ask for forgiveness of our sin before we can partake of the supper. But then when you read Jesus' instruction, it says, do this in remembrance of me. There is nothing that I say, ask for forgiveness of sin before you, you take the communion. And the second part to the question should a non baptized person be allowed to take the communion? Because the Bible says if you accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal Savior, you are safe. So if a person is saved, should he be allowed to take the communion or should he be baptized first before taking the communion? Well, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure I got all of that, but I, I did pick up some of it. Um, uh, the scripture does say in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 27 and following, it says, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person in, examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And there's a number of different ways where you can partake of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. One of the problems that the Corinthians had is that they were very carnal and they were basically feasting it up, you know, like a gluttonous feast. And that's an unworthy thing to do. Another unworthy way of partaking of the Lord's Supper is to do it as a strict ritual without any meaning, recognizing what it means in terms of what, the, what Jesus did for us. Uh, I do think that Scripture says that we are to examine ourselves, and as we examine ourselves, whatever is unclean or whatever is unworthy uh, should be taken out because, you know, what, what this represents is the most intimate of relationships with Jesus Christ. And as we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're celebrating not only what Jesus accomplished for us at the cross in dying for our sins, but it also uh, gets us excited about the fact that Christ is coming again. We're to do this until he comes again. And when you think about it, it makes sense. After all, why would you want to be involved in any kind of sin when you celebrate what Jesus did to get rid of your sin. You see, you see the, the contrast there? You don't want to be involved in any kind of a sin as you celebrate the act of Jesus in atoning for your sin. Uh, those things just don't belong together. It's like an oxymoron. And so that's what I personally think is going on in 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and following. I hope that helps. Does that help? I hope that helps. Yeah, and the second part was, to a non Christian partake in the Last Supper. Uh, if you need to be baptized before communion. Um, I think that's the question. Oh, I Did see. I hear that right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, do you need to be baptized before communion, Ron? I think that as soon as you become a believer, you can participate in communion. But I also think that one of the first acts of, of obedience that Christians should participate is getting baptized. Now, baptism doesn't save you. I don't think that that's the case at all. In fact, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 1 talks about how he was called to preach the gospel and not to baptize. And later on in chapter 15 in 1 Corinthians, we're told that the gospel saves. So the gospel alone saves as we place our faith in that. But nevertheless, baptism is one of the first acts of obedience we ought to engage in because it's kind of like a... Um, it's kind of like an open declaration to the rest of the world that we have a new identity in Jesus Christ, that we've died to our old way of life, and we're now risen in a new way of life in which we're following the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's something that uh, shows the whole world that we've got a new identification. And so yeah, you should do that as soon as you can, but I don't think that you have to necessarily do that before you partake of communion. I think that as soon as you become a believer, you can partake of communion.